will focus on that. The first point essentially is to, uh, to disclose that the migration issue is a global issue. And for Assam, it continued over centuries. So it wasn't as though something had suddenly happened and the amalgam of different communities moving into migration, bringing different communities into Assam gave what sociologists have said is a, a salad bowl. So well, there's two perceptions about a salad bowl and, and about a mosaic, or on the other hand, it would be a melting pot. So the preferred view seems to be of a salad bowl. This is how it existed. But of course, as your lordships have, have heard from the others, there were issues that were, that were different as far as the western, western border was concerned and the eastern border. The issues on the eastern border was the constant move from one part of Bengal to another part of Bengal. So Assam was in a sense separate because they didn't want to impact on the issues between the two parts of Bengal. Assam then therefore becomes in a sense collateral to that issue. So Assam issue was never resolved in terms of the permit system that was introduced in the West. And the permit system, your lordships might recall, was particularly focused on the issue that people who had left and their homes had been given to refugees coming in from from west from western part or from west pakistan could not then be asked to evacuate their homes that they were given as refugees to return to people who had come back and therefore the permit system was particularly carefully monitored this didn't happen in the eastern part and particularly as your Lordship saw Justice Baharul Islam's judgment, we've, his, his speech in the Raj Sabha. We've mentioned all that here, Lords, and therefore a separate issue had to be framed as far as, as far as the eastern side was concerned. And that, of course, the 64 was an obviously a landmark point, 64. 66 follows because 64 follows with the 67 electoral, electoral rolls. But the critical matter, Malos, is the 19, 1971. 1971, if your lordship will see here, in, uh, in point number two, if your lordship will see, Bangladesh had already introduced their citizenship law in 1972. We were introducing in 1985. So in effect, the 1971 aligns itself with the Bangladesh law. So there is no gap between Indian citizenship and Bangladesh citizenship. Your lordships were, were asking if it had something to do with Operation Searchlight and the migrations that would have been caused due to distress because of the Pakistani army operating. The Bangladesh government said they would take back all the people who had moved during that period. Because if they were in Bangladesh on the first day, which was on 25th of March, they would be citizens under the 72 law. And therefore, we were only concerned with people who were not in Bangladesh on the, on the 25th of March. Those citizens would be taken care of, those people would be taken care of by the Indian law and it aligns. Now, Malos, if for any reason the 71 alignment is changed for any reason, it would mean that 40 years later, there are a huge number of stateless citizens something to which we are not yet signed as far as the convention is concerned. But government of India has always been careful about not creating or not being seen in the world as creating stateless citizens. And that is very critical point why your lordships would wish to uphold the 71 as the so-called cutoff date, though there is some issue about whether it should be called a cutoff date at all. So my lords, that's point number two in my, in my submissions. Just to give a brief background on all Assam Students' Union, because a question had come from the Honorable Court that why Assam and why not West Bengal? The answer lies herein. It is because of this long agitation from 1970, uh, 1979 to 1985. So, my lords, the first point, the backdrop of the Assam Accord dated 15th August 1985. The Assam Accord was signed between the Union of India, State of Assam, All Assam Students Union and All Assam Gun Sangram Parishad in the backdrop of a six-year-long movement, 1979 to 1985 in the state. 
against the unabated illegal migration of foreigners into Assam, their settlement in Assam and their inclusion in the voters list. During the agitation, about 860 persons who are considered as martyrs during the Assam movement lost their lives and thousands were injured due to police action. Very recently, the Martyrs Day was uh, actually in commemoration of these people who had lost their lives was held, my lords, in Assam. The state suffered tremendous political uncertainty with four changes of government and three spells of president's rule during the six-year period. And this is very important, my lords, clause 13 and 14 of the Assam Accord, because this is on restoration of normalcy, which is the underlying concept under Section 6A. That is the purpose it was brought into for the purposes of restoration of peace and normalcy in the state of Assam. And a, a book that sums it up, The Quest for Modern Assam by Arup Jyoti Saikia, which is also a part of the compilation, it has two chapters on each and every meeting that had gone on that time with the government and with the All Assam Students Union. The run up till 1983, thereafter in 1985, after the Prime Minister's assassination, then in 1985, what were the events which led to the agreement behind this Assam Accord and then it came into play. And the background that was discovered was was also discussed and when finally agreed upon were the 1964 riots which had happened in east pakistan where there was mass massacre of the population and therefore they had escaped into india so therefore they became a part of the 1967 electoral rolls so therefore that part of the population that had come in at that stage was included but the part after that then the government agreed would be kept disenfranchised therefore the period till 1971 where they were not included in the electoral rolls so therefore in the history of this entire accord is the agitation and therefore the difference between west bengal and assam for the purposes of this particular section now coming to my second point where a lot of uh, Arguments were raised by the petitioners on the uh, infiltration continuing. For that, I just want to point out one para from the reference order itself. Para 46 is very important because the point that we are making here is that the constitutional varies of a statutory provision cannot be tested on the basis of faulty or inadequate implementation of the said provision. And if my lords will only have para 46 of the reference order it says if i may just read the introduction on an overall consideration of the immediate dimensions of the issues and the potential that the same have for the future we issue the following directions under article 142 of the constitution of india one is border fencing border roads and provision for floodlights the second is foreigners' tribunals. The third is existing mechanism of deportation of declared illegal migrants. And in that, 48.1 preparatory work, such as selection of vendor system, development by system integrator, appointment of staff and training, etc., has already been directed to be completed by the end of January 2015 by order dated 27-11-2014 of the court 48.2. The remaining work of updating the NRC will now conform to the following time schedule, which will be strictly adhered to. And 49, all the cases, so on and so forth. So therefore, if my lords will see that this is the implementation that had to be carried out as per the Assam Accord. <laughs> absence of this implementation cannot be a reason to fault section 6a then coming to the third point which has already been addressed so i will only talk about the case law very briefly to say that the petitioners are also disentitled from claiming the relief on account of inordinate delay and for that i only want to point out that whether it is ram chandra shankar deodhar whether it is rabindranath bose or whether it is srilok chand the underlying concept in all these judgments is that if the rights of another set of people have already got created, then the delay in filing the petition cannot be then waived off. And 
my lords will just see i have just given a few instances when they could have challenged and they did not and therefore these rights have now crystallized over 40 years one instance that i have given the report by the lieutenant general sk sinha was prepared on 8 1198 which in detail talked about this uh, problem then comes that answer reply to the answer yes, question yes, 14 yes. july 20 2000 absolutely absolutely and point. the repetition sarban and sonowal you say was filed in 2000 absolutely and this actually considers the assam accord in para 18 and in para 33 in great detail the next point uh, i will just on the legislative competence i just want to point out one article just for the purposes of saying that how 5 6 and 7 articles 5 6 and 7 the purpose was that they would work themselves out at the commencement of the constitution i only want to point out article 394 if i may read this article and articles 5 6 7 8 9 60 324 366 367 th, shall come into force at once and the remaining provisions of this constitution shall come into force on the 26th day of january 1950 which day is referred to in this constitution as the commencement of this constitution so therefore my lords the other the 5 6 7 section the articles were supposed to come into effect on 26 november 1949 and therefore at the commencement of the constitution therefore by 26 january 1950 they were supposed to come into play for the grant of citizenship and thereafter therefore we have said that the purpose of article 11 was only to add not to deprive any anybody but to add a certain class of persons which were not covered by articles 5 to 9 that is the point that i have covered in point 4 i have also given detailed submissions my lords which is there already on record another judgment that i wanted to add because izhar ahmed when it discusses in great detail article 11 it is a constitution bench judgment it is very clear on what article 11 entails and it has been followed in state of up versus shah mohammad i have given the volume number and the pages and also the para para 5 of state of up versus shah mohammad it's a case very similar to izhar ahmed and it follows izhar ahmed and again reiterates that article 11 is supposed to then come into play for the purposes of the laws to be made for citizenship the, my fifth point very briefly i have tried to state that section 6a is not the only statutory provision to be based on a political agreement and i have given two instances for this article 371a which is the 13th amendment act and it is based on the agreement between the government of india and the leaders of the naga peoples convention then i have also cited six schedule which is the the uh, Uh, which is based on the memorandum of settlement entered into between the government of india government of assam and bodo liberation tigers and this is now the on the autonomous districts and autonomous regions it covers the areas in the state of assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram then i have just added some case law to say that the classification on the basis of historical or geographical reasons is base is absolutely valid and therefore i have only added the judgment in state of mp versus bhopal sugar was already cited before my lords i have only added one more judgment on geographical classification which is ram krishna dalmia versus justice s r tindolkar and i have also added clarence by versus union of india and in the end i am only making a point that if the history of this agitation is seen it is actually wonderfully spelled out in the quest for modern assam which is also a part of volume 4a by arup jyoti sakhia it will be very clear that what had happened throughout this process and why because of the bihar settlers why because of the Uh, the bengali language and why this agitation became 
much more than what the people of Assam could handle and therefore for peace and normalcy, the Section 6A was brought about.